20s two straight converted by Chapman. A ways to go to that franchise record Mariano Rivera in 2009. Here's Sandy Leone. You know, Buster, the question that I think Yankee Nation wants to find out, if game 163 is tomorrow, who pitches? Is it Severino or is it Tanaka? Knowing that the winner of that game plays Boston. Assuming that the Red Sox win the division. Based on recent results, I think you'd go with Tanaka. Uh, you know, there's a great stat on Tanaka that uh, when there were series in which the Yankees are on the verge of being swept in those games, he's 5 and 2 coming in tonight with a 2.09 ERA. He loves these moments. He's always responded to these moments. And to your point, if you start Luis Severino in a longer series, you've got uh, more flexibility, not as much pressure. Severino hasn't thrown as well lately. I would go with Tanaka. I back you, Alex. Yeah, Buster. I mean, you said the magic words there for a lot of us. I've, just as an outsider looking from the uh, from the seats, four straight, very non-Severino-like yeah. performances from him, including a bad one in this series. There has to be mild concern there for the Yankees. I'll well, tell you, speaking to him yesterday, he was very confident. He feels like there's a little bump in the road. But I like how he is in the in the top row cheering his teammates on. He's been very relaxed, showing a smile. When you have a young pitcher like Severino, I concern more myself with the way they handle themselves, the way they carry themselves. And what I like today, he's been top step and a big smile on his face. And look, and talking look, to his good buddy Cece. I was going to say, and look at who he's next to. I mean, that to me is, that's the leader of this team. When we talk about who leads them. CeCe Sabathia is a big part of that. He's the one that's helped Luis Severino in a big way. I mean, CeCe is a terrific leader, and those two are tight. Just like Andy Pettit was the mentor to CeCe, now CeCe is paying it forward to Luis Severino. Ball four to Sandy Leone, and that brings the tying run into the on-deck circle. Mookie bets the batter. Ben Benintendi next with one away here in the last of the ninth. If you're Chapman, your number one goal here is you want to make sure that J.D. Martinez had his last at bat a couple of innings ago. A ball and no strikes to Betts, who has singled and homered tonight. Betts last night played in his 600th major league game. 732 career hits in those first 600 games. Only four players in the last 80 years have had more in the Red Sox franchise. He's got some numbers against the role as Chapman. Granted small sample size but three for seven lifetime against the Yankees closer. And it's three and one. And if you're the Yankees I'd like to see Greg Bird playing behind the runner. He's doing nothing there at this point if you're the Yankees you're trading outs for runners. So do not open any more holes out there. They don't need them. The 3 1 pitch. Our 28th full count of the night. Let's take you back to Mookie's home run, number 26, against Masahiro Tanaka in the fifth inning. Back in the fifth, and it was the at bat. That's what we're seeing right now with Chapman is how patient Mookie Betts will be with an at bat to get a pitch that he can drive. We saw him lay off the slider, which is the third ball of this at bat. And then his last pitch, he got a pitch that he could drive, just missing it, fouling it straight back. 
even though it's 3-2, Leon will stay put at first base, not going anywhere. And Betts draws ball four, so the Red Sox will indeed have an opportunity with the tying run at the plate. And that walk starts getting some movement in the Red Sox bullpen. So Boston down to its final try tonight. It'll be Steve Pierce who's 0 for 4 this evening but who in the first two games of the series his first two games rather struck for four home runs. Oof. Guys he's about to match his season high for pitches high and Eddie outing is 26. We mentioned Buster Chapman not working for five days the last time he had a layoff like this he went six days between outings before finally getting into a game on July 21st against the Mets and it was a similar line faced five batters hit one batter allowed a hit walked three two and oh spending some time with Chapman this week he is like a Ferrari he the more he works the better he is and he wants to be used more and more and more he's a strong guy and also emotions when you don't pitch you come out a little bit too strong and that's what you're seeing today that's why I thought Larry Rothschild would be a great time for him to comment down. Pierce trying to extend the game and give J.D. Martinez a chance next with two away there's a strike and it's two and one. But you can just tell by the way Chapman's walking around on the mound his his pace it just reads of a guy who just isn't quite right tonight. And it's three and one. And if you're Pierce, you may think about being really disciplined and taking one, although you are the tie and run. But if you're Pierce and the Red Sox, if you get J.D. Martinez yes. up to the plate, that's a win for the Red Sox. Boy, you couldn't ask for a better bit of drama than to have J.D. Martinez up there as the winning run in the bottom of the ninth with the bases loaded against one of the nastiest in the game. First to three one. A full count down three balls and two strikes to Pierce. Well, Chapman has two choices here. He can go hard or he can go back to the slider which he's got two strikeouts this inning. The problem is you have J.D. Martinez behind it. I think he goes with a slider. The full count pitch. Ball four. Chapman has walked him loaded and J.D. Martinez will indeed have a chance tonight. I'd love to see Larry Rothschild get out there at some point and calm him down. Oh, how about this for some late drama? It's taken us over four hours to get here. But what a situation. Yes. Chapman versus Martinez with the game on the line. You talked about it being a sold out crowd. This is what they came for. They came for this, for the fact that they have the best hitter in baseball right now in J.D. Martinez as far as power, as far as clutch, as far as everything that he does for the Red Sox. But the base is loaded against the Rolls Chapman. And the reason why I thought the slider was a better pitch there, because he's proven this inning, he's got better control. He's got the two strikeouts on the slider. Don't try to force a fastball. Go with what's working tonight. So the Red Sox have pinch run at first base. Jackie Bradley Jr. will run for Pierce, and that means that the trailing two runs out there, the tying runs in Benson and Bradley, represent the best speed on the roster. Leon at third, Betts at second, Bradley at first, and J.D. Martinez representing the winning run with two out in the last of the night. On the first pitch, lined into center field, a base hit. Leon scores. Here's Mookie, and it's a one-run game. How about after? 
after the walk, J.D. Martinez looking up in the zone. First pitch not taking, but aggressive swinging. This is 99 up at the belt. J.D., all he has to do with this velocity is meet it. He does line drive up the middle. Winning run at first, tying run in scoring position now for Xander Bogarts. And for the Yankees, the best arms are in center field with Hicks and in left field with Brett Gardner. Both have rockets, very accurate. Xander could only have asked for the opportunity once again to make good for the error, which was a big part of the four-run Yankee rally in the seventh. Again, small sample size, but he's never had any kind of success against Chapman. 0 for 5 with two strikeouts in his career. And another great stop by Romine. You want to keep those two runners at first and second. Again, if you're Chapman and you're Romine and you're reading body language and you're reading stuff, Chapman has proven to all of us that his best pitch tonight is his slider. He has more conviction and more control. Bogarts with a chopper up the third baseline for Andujar. Long throw. Oh, they can't make the play. Here comes Bradley to score, and this game is tied. Santa Maria. And the ball will find the ball will find you, Andrew, who's had a tough long night at third base. Nice back step, the mistake. Take one extra step and get over the top and play some catch with Greg Bird. You see him throw this ball flat footed, a little bit like a quarterback on his heels. Take one extra step and throw that great strong arm over the top is not what he did right there. The second error of the night charged to Miguel Andujar. So now Sandy Leone. And hold another product from Damon Oppenheimer, a six-rounder in 2014 out of Mississippi State. Throwing the ball quite nicely here. Two walks and two strikeouts for Sandy Leone tonight. He's a home run away from enjoying a, a real three true outcomes line. A ball and a strike. You know, for all the Yankees bullpen accolades this year, they are just five and four in extra innings this season. Boston six and three in bonus frames. Oh, look at that. Sonny Gray up in the bullpen. Wow, that was quick. Vanderbilt reun reunion here at Fenway today. And it's one and two to Leon now. Sonny being removed from the starting rotation for Lance Lynn, the new acquisition. He came in actually to replace Sonny Gray this week when he had struggled. And then he went over four innings, Lance Lynn. With success, will now be a starter and Gray new to the bullpen. Chance we could see him tonight. This morning, however, you want to look at it. <laughs> Leon's aboard on a base hit up the middle. Winning run on base with two out in the tenth for Mookie Betts.
Betts has hit his 26th home run of the year tonight. He's added a single and a walk to his line. You don't have to go back too far to find his last walk off homer. Better part of a week and a half, July 27th. That one bounces away. And now the winning run is in scoring position with two out. Boy, this is interesting, Alex. It's it's a tough call to make if you want a pinch run for a catcher. But Sandy Leon's not exactly fleet of foot. And I think they will. I think they will. Oh. And perhaps while they think about that, the decision's been made by the Yankees to intentionally walk Mookie Betts. And you may get a pitcher. I mean, again, I think this is where Alex Cora gets very creative. I would not be surprised if there's a pinch runner of some some type. Yeah, Alex is trying to negotiate a move here. They are going to pinch run for Leon. That's the right move there for uh, for Alex Cora and the Red Sox. Face hit, you have to win the game and sell out here. So it's Tony Renda to run. You can pitch to Andrew Benatendi, or you can roll the dice and pitch to Bradley Jr. It is Andrew Benintendi with Jackie Bradley Jr. Perhaps ready for his first plate appearance in this game next. Bradley, remember, pinch ran in the ninth. And the first pitch to Benintendi misses low. And if you're Miguel and Duhar, you need to back up about 10 steps. He has no business playing in for the bunt there. Two balls and no strikes. You see him where he's even with the bag there. He should really, really back up almost as a shortstop. Because as an infielder, you want to keep everything in front of you. So you dive for everything. Forget about the bunts now. All the way back. See him there. He's way out of position there. Wow, and Holder catches a call on the corner that time. Two balls and a strike to Benintendi. Take a look at that again on K Zone 3D. Wow. I'll use the old Lasorda line there. Garvey couldn't have hit that with an oar. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. the middle oh, and through and that's how the Red Sox have walked it off tonight wow Andrew Benintendi has cemented his status as one of the biggest villains in the Bronx that this rivalry has seen in a long time. The game winning hit in the bottom of the 10th. Capping a rally that saw the Red Sox pull even with three in the ninth. The winner in the bottom of the 10th.
Tendi. What we've seen him do tonight. Started the game off with a double. He had a single in the third and it struggled the last three at bats. Comes up with just a seeing eye single. A six hopper to get through to walk it off for the Red Sox. When you're the Yankees, you come in here back four and a half, hoping to gain ground, and you leave Boston nine and a half. A devastating, crushing defeat for the Bombers.